Hello again. Um, this is actually something that I wasn't going to make um, a video about, but um, once I started doing it, I thought, well, it actually could be quite useful um, to somebody who hasn't done it before. So um, I am basically, uh, it's a bit complicated. There's the front beam I have on my um, Red 64 Beetle. Um, it's slightly narrowed, I think two inch narrowed, and um, has adjusters. And it did have drop spindles on it as well, because when I bought it, um, it was on BRM wheels, and it was quite low down. And um, because it had the roll cage, initially I think the previous owner was going to drag race with it, and um, didn't get to that stage. So when I bought it, I contemplated removing the cage, um, but it was so nicely done that I decided to paint the cage, leave it in there, and do like a 60s style rally car look with it. So I removed the BRMs and put the Porsche replica wheels on, um, and I removed the um, drop spindles, but the adjustment on the beam that's on there is on its maximum and it's just about where I want it, but I don't like the fact that the front is a little bit narrowed. Um, so the, each wheel is um, in the wheel arch an inch, about an inch, I think, further than the standard. So I want to put original beam back on original width, um, but I don't want the exactly the original front ride height, because it's just a little bit too high. Um, I'd like it to be even with the back, and the back is just a little bit lower than standard. So I like the ride height and everything as it is now, it's just I don't like the narrowness. So, um, a guy I work with, he has quite a few um, Volkswagen parts um, at his home, so he brought this um, beam in for me. And I remembered that I had some adjusters that I had for a ball joint. Um, Beetle 65 that I had a few years ago um, and the only difference with the adjusters from the ball joint is the collar that fits inside that your leaf springs um, slide through and, and uh, like grab to inside here. Um, so I cut the um, jaws or the adjusting things off of those and I decided to use the original ones. And in order to do that, you have to, I'll move the camera so you can see. So, on this original beam, it has like these um, dimples and they hold in place the collars that are inside that the um, leaf springs slide through. So you have to basically heat these up um, until they're red hot and then you put a, a drift a metal rod through and then you hit it with a hammer and you smash them out which is quite barbaric but that's how they recommend do it and um, so that's what I did and you'll see in the series of videos that I put together for this um, so yeah you you heat this up you smash them through then you have to um, uh, cut a slot so you can actually move the collar like this and that in turn raises or lowers the suspension arms. So that's basically it and today I'm going to clean this beam up and hopefully get it painted and maybe if I have time remove the beam um, from my beetle so I will film that as well. Okay here it goes, hold tight.
here it is after I just smashed them out. Um, this is the bar, it's a solid bar that I used um, that went down inside the tubes. One broken hammer and it absolutely stinks in here. I probably should have tried to have cleaned it out a little bit better. It's all the grease inside that's burning hot. You can see the pipe is, or the um, drift is still smoking there. So I think now I have to remove, remove these, um, probably these two bearings. Oh, do I even have to? Maybe I just um, grind the slots out and then I can slide those back into position and uh, that should be it, right? Okay, so next I'm going to clean this rusty shit off and go from there. After I've just cleaned off the uh, rust and everything, you can still see that the dimples are still partially there. Um, I'm not sure if that affects it at all. I will find out when I try to slide them back, I think. But first, maybe I'll mark out where I need to grind out the slot. Um, grind it out and then see if it slips back into position. So I think that's the next thing I'm going to do. So I'll just, I think, so to be able to lower it, these arms need to go that way. So the original position, so yeah, I need to make the slot that way. And I don't want to go super low with this. I just want maybe three centimeters, I would think, something like that. Maybe not even that much. So I think if I mark it there, that'd be perfect. Right, so what I've done is I, I got the adjuster, laid it on top of there, and then I marked with the scriber, like that. So it left the mark on the metal so I know which, what to cut. And then I set, uh, drilled a hole, and then the last bit I'm going to cut these little bits off and then maybe tidy up with a file. So I'll demonstrate on this one. So I put that on there. I guess my hands are in the way of it. So then I mark it like this. And then I use this punch. So you find the center of where you want to start drilling, which is about there. And this has a spring in, so you just push down. You hear that? And it leaves a little mark on the metal. And that's a guide uh, for where your drill bit's gonna go to stop it slipping off. So I'll put this. So I start with a pilot drill bit first. Um, I never start off a hole um, with this because the, the first one will wear out really quickly. Or not really quickly, but um, oh, um, you'll probably use this first one more um, than the others. So I normally just use a, a normal drill and set a pilot hole. So you line it up with the dot you just made. Change over to the Christmas tree. Like that, and then we go to 12 millimeters. And I can still see the mark, obviously, that I made. So I have a guide. Guess that's 12. Can I see? 12 is that one. So yeah, that's 12. So now I'm going to get the uh, now I'm going to use the angle grinder, change it to a, a cutting disc. Like that. Put my goggles on. And then I'll cut these 
centre bits out. Let's fish these out because we don't want them in there. I'll obviously have to clean everything thoroughly through. So I think I'll flush this through um, before everything goes back together again because all these um, filings are going to stick to the grease that's in, inside and you don't want any of that inside, obviously. So I'll probably drag a, a rag through or something and then clean it out with a brake cleaner or something like that and then um, yeah so I just need to file these edges off get, ri get rid of the sharp edges and then weld these on and we're almost there cool I just put a couple of uh, tacks either side to hold it in place. Now I will take these um, the top jaws off because um, I don't want to, uh, when I'm welding, accidentally touch that because then the whole thing is stuck together. So I'm going to take those off. I'll put these back in um, to perfect, pr protect the thread when I'm welding because you get spatter from the MIG welder and it could stick on the inside of the thread and then, then you can't get this bolt back in. Right, I just um, finished welding these on. Um, I'm assuming if you're, you're trying to do something like this that you have some um, welding skills um, because when you're messing around with things like suspension and stuff like that then um, obviously it has to be safe and uh, yeah so just be careful if you're not quite sure about welding it yourself then get somebody else to do it but um yep so anyway I've just cleaned them up with a wire wheel and I don't know if you noticed but these are the original um, screws and they're obviously shorter um, than the new ones um, because we've added material so we have the thickness of this with the additional thickness of this um, locking I don't know what you call it jaw so then you need the uh, longer thread um, to compensate so that is pretty much done for this. Um, next thing I'm going to have to do, obviously, is clean up all this rust. Uh, then I'll clean out all the insides. I think I'm going to change the bearings because this beam looked like it had been at the bottom of a swamp for 30 years or something. So if I'm going to do this, I might as well do it now. Just been cleaning this um, beam up with the um, wire brush. On the grinder and um, I think because I'm gonna lower this um, like I said not too much but a little bit I think I'm gonna cut off the um, bump stop or the arm this uh, arm that the bump stop um, fits onto um, because um, because obviously I'm gonna lower it my range of suspension is going to change a little bit and 
it might bottom out more on the bump stop and it's obviously there for a reason um, to stop like the beam from touching the floor um, but I'm feeling naughty so I'm gonna cut it off uh, the last car I put through the MOT didn't have the bump stops and it wasn't a problem so um, what I'm going to do, I'm going to cut them off but keep the arms so if it is a problem when I take it to the MOT um, I'll, I can just tack them back on and um, go through the MOT so yeah I'm going to cut them off okay so there it is, cut it off it looks exactly the same as the other side um, so hopefully yeah, when it needs an MOT, if I take it there at 4 o'clock on a Friday, um, they'll pass it. Right, ready for painting. I've just blocked off the holes where the um, suspension arms go and also uh, where the bolt goes for the uh, top mount for the shock absorber. Um, best to block those off so you don't get paint on the threads. You'll be glad later when you, get, you go to screw them back in. Obviously, it could be better. I could have sandblasted this. Um, I've taken off all the loose surface rust and I've just given it a quick degrease and it's not perfect obviously, but I mean, you can see the beam has had a bit of a hard life and it's going on my 64, um, which I don't think I'm gonna be entering for any concourse anytime soon. So um, also the paint I'm going to use, I just found this in the cupboard, this is the same paint as I painted the fuel tank and the tinware for the engine and it says direct to rust, so that's what I'm going to do, a little bit of surface rust, like I said there's no uh, loose stuff on here anymore, so this is this will be fine for the job. Right, just had a little bit of a brainwave, I don't know if you can see it with the sun, it's a lovely day here in Finland. I'm going to paint it outside. Now that's something I don't say too often. But here, I um, actually put the bolts back in and then wrapped some uh, tape around them. And then I could hang it like this um, so I don't have to wait for it to dry and turn it over. It's going to be a little bit hard to paint the bottom because it's quite low, but let's see how it goes. Okay, so just after the first coat, it's looking a lot better. Um, I always go fairly light with the first coat. Um, just to get some coverage and then it gives a good base um, to put a second coat on you can go a bit thicker um, a lot of people make the mistake of putting on the first coat too thick um, you're more prone to getting runs then I'll probably get runs today after saying that but hey I don't mind um, but yeah you see you, the first coat you go fairly light just to get coverage and then the second coat slightly thicker so I'll let this dry off and then come back and paint it. Okay, just brought it in from outside and uh, it looks pretty damn good considering what it did look like. Um, I think that's enough for this video and in a, in a next video I shall fit it up and remove the old one and uh, maybe do a video on that. Like I said, I wasn't going to do one on this but I got carried away and did. So um, yeah, that's the beam ready. Okay, thanks again for watching. Until next time, bye!